All right, I'm going to walk through the We Have Always Been Sovereign reading and assignment on this presentation. And the first thing I'm going to do before I get to my reading link is I'm going to look through my question. And as I look at my questions here, I'm going to try to pick out some keywords to listen to as I do the reading so I know ahead of time what I should zoom in for. Question one, what significance does the number seven hold for Dakota political organization? Question two, who kept order in a traditional Dakota village? Question three, what did European Americans call the Dakota? Why would they have used that term? Four, when and why did the seven Dakota divisions come together? Number five, according to oral tradition, where did the Ojibwe people originate? Where did they come from? Six, what is a clan? How did Ojibwe clans serve to unite the people? Seven, how are Ojibwe clans related to their traditional political organization? Eight, describe what leadership looked like for Ojibwe women. Be sure to include what leadership was like in the past as well as currently. And by opening up the link on the top, you get to this reading. Okay. We have always been sovereign nations. And we know what that word sovereign means because sovereign was a vocab term and we know it means independent. So I could say, we have always been independent nations. At the time of contact with the Europeans, the indigenous people of North America had governed themselves for countless centuries. These tribal nations were sovereign. These tribal nations were independent and most functioned as a direct democracy. A direct democracy is one in which the consensus of all the people is needed for an action to take place. Unlike the American system of majority rule, everybody's voice was heard. So the idea of a direct democracy versus what we would commonly equate to traditionally in our Euro-American role of democracy, we use this idea of a simple majority. So 50% plus one. If there were 10 people and we all wanted to go out to eat, all we need is for six people to agree, and then we'll all go to that restaurant. The other four who might not have agreed really might not have liked the restaurant that we picked. In a direct democracy, everybody has to agree on where we're going to eat. Now, one of the differences here, too, is to ensure that everyone's voice is heard. If what if we go back to this 10 people going out to eat idea if somebody decides not to go out nine people pick dairy queen because of the blizzards and one person does not pick dairy queen they're not banished they're not kicked out they might join another tribe or clan and there's no harm no foul no one is upset about that they might pick a clan that better will decide where they're going out to eat in this idea or they're going to pick a clan that's going to better fit themselves and no one's upset people can move clans because they're going to find a better relationship wherever they go this direct democracy everyone has to agree before a decision is made some tribal nations are small perhaps consisting of just a village and others form confederacies groups of individual tribal nations the dakota nation according to oral tradition, originally consisted of seven divisions. Now, seven, I know, is a word that's in my first question, so I'm keyed in to listen. These divisions were referred to as the seven council fires. Fire is a metaphor for a group of people living together in one place, just as a family might sit at a common fire. The number seven also has sacred or sacred can be another word for kind of like, it's kind of like a spiritual or a religious. It could also be a spiritual significance and may stand for the seven directions of the seven stars of the Big Dipper. So for question one, I know it's within this space. The seven divisions are going to be located here. Now, some of these, such as the Metawakan Band, is just out by Shakopee, and some of them, the Sisseton Band, 
is now located towards more of uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, closer to the Yankton Band. And these are our tribes. These are the seven tribes of the Dakota Nations. These divisions refer largely to locations in Minnesota and Tithuwa, Tithuwa refer to the people who began to live on the plains to the west. European Americans called these seven divisions the Sioux. And I know I have another question here as to why they were called and what they were called. They're called the Sioux. And now we put down as to our why. A name that their Algonquin neighbors may have given to them. In each Dakota village, there was a head soldier who helped keep order in daily life. And I know that order is another part of my question. So for number two, we'd probably be talking about a head soldier. And that head soldier works in a connection to a council of adult males who form a soldier's lodge. The Dakota and the head soldier are the ones who are in charge. Each village conducts their own affairs, but villagers came together as one to defend against enemies. The Dakota divisions also came together, often during summer months, to feast, visit, conduct ceremonies, and play games such as the cross. So right now, I've got questions four to one answered. If you would like to pause the video and go back, you totally can. Take some time to make sure that you found in this first paragraph here, the first two, questions four and one, four to one, are all together. Now I know I'm listening to what's oral tradition, where did people come from, what's a clan, how did they get used, what are clans doing to their traditional political organization, and what leadership's like. The Dakota people, according to oral tradition, oral tradition, where am I at? I'm on number five, oral tradition. The Dakota people, the Ojibwe people, excuse me, According to oral tradition, once lived on the east coast of North America. They gradually moved west into the Great Lakes to find a food which grows on the water, and that food is wild rice. At the time of contact, the Ojibwe lived over a widespread area in the Great Lakes region. In their summer villages, the people appointed a civil chief who helped keep order in daily life. The clan organization helped unite this widespread nation because every individual belonged to a particular clan. The Ojibwe called these clans Dudan. The clan is named a descent group, and among the Ojibwe, the children always belong to the clan of their father. Each of over 20 clans was represented in each camp or village throughout this widespread territory. In a traditional Western sense, we can think about a clan very similar to a small family group, and is there anything inside of a traditional Western family which is passed down amongst a father? Some of you might be thinking of a last name. Every clan name reflected the kinship of the family of the Ojibwe people felt for the living beings around them. According to oral tradition, the original clan ancestor came out of the water and gave the Ojibwe the five additional, five original like original clans. According to William Warren, an Ojibwe historian, these clans are the Bullhead, the Crane, the Loon, the Bear, and the Mark. Others say that there's seven original clans and they include, in addition, the Bird and the Deer. Each clan served a special purpose in community life. For example, the clans of the Air, especially the Crane, serve as village Question seven is going to ask us what's their political organization. Here at St. Peter Middle School, my political organization is teaching social studies. Here at St. Peter Middle School, Miss Anderson's political organization is teaching ELA. Mr. Malls would be teaching math. So here we have the crane as village chiefs, the bear are community police, and the soldiers 
that are first to defend their people against common enemies, so also warrior. The catfish clan are known as teachers. Those are three examples. Long ago, women as well as men could become village leaders. Women had a lot of power in the historic Ojibwe communities, including say over marriage and divorce, as well as the ownership of a wigwam or a house. In the 1800s, there were three women chiefs in the Leech Lake area. Today, Ojibwe women still serve as leaders, and there are women tribal chairs on four of the seven reservations within Minnesota. Awesome. Thanks.